Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. Devil Woman. Devil. Devil. I'm this. Devil Woman. That you are. This is episode 210, recorded February 28th, 2024. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will tackle another classic or not so classic film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. Uh, we have a fun one set up for you tonight. Can't wait to announce the film. But first, let me introduce the crew, starting off with Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? I am excellent. I'm still hanging in Southern California. Hanging ah. in Southern and, and dry. Uh, fairly dry. It's, <laughs> it, you know, it rains here, but it, it's not usually bad. <laughs> it don't rain there. <laughs> I, I do believe uh, February might have been their highest record, highest rainfall. I was talking with uh, our guest here uh, um, before we got on. It was, I th let's see, what day is this? Wednesday. Monday, it was 70 degrees in Iowa. Tuesday afternoon, it was like uh, 14 or maybe even below zero. Wow. That's like, mm, about right. There back up to 30 today. So anyway, that's been the weather report from yes, that's, that's, Southern that's California it. Beach House. From Jeff Moore. Thank you, sir. Also joining us is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, specialist guru, all around nice guy and published author. Tell us Rom. about it. Rom. Thank you. Rom. Rom. I just got a new box of them in. I'll be going mm. to a convention this weekend, hopefully unloading. Oh, nice. Few. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right, Chad huh. is off, but we have a very special guest host by the, the name of Gregory Crosby. We are so happy to have you. Thank you, sir. If someone had told me four years ago, as uh. I was listening to Doc and Santos discuss mm. the dubious merits of the incredible melting man, <laughs> one day I too would be on the Decades of Horror podcast, I would have said, actually, that tracks. That's the kind of thing that happens. To me. <laughs> that tracks. That tracks. But, but, so but, I am uh, thrilled uh, to be here. Thrilled, thrilled. Another again. published author. Another yes. published author. Yes, but eventually it's just poetry. So let's just move on. No, oh, stop. Uh, move on no. right past that. Uh, but it's no, no. Stuff. Come on, okay. hold up a copy. Okay. No, I don't. I don't. I don't have a copy. Oh, we literally just moved. Everything's in chaos except for the wall of. Of terror, all of horror. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty good, pretty good wall. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, set that. I knew this was coming, so I set this up right after the move. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. Well, our the we have some other news to share, but first off, I just want to let you know what film we're covering. If you didn't see it in the headlines, we are finally doing Countess Dracula from Yay. Hammer Films, nineteen seventy one. Very excited to be doing this. We've been talking about quite a lot especially because of uh, one Ingrid Pitt, who I think all of us admire. And I would, I would wager that Gregory is part of that as well. No, uh, yeah. but before, before we do that, Jeff, do you have anything about a uh, play now media? Well, yeah. And we are uh, partnering with play now media. All of the decades of horror are on the wicked horror TV channel, seventies, eighties and classic era. So, That's Hey, awesome. check us out there. Uh, Classic Era is also on the Classic Sci-Fi Movie Channel and the Classic Horror Movie Channel. So check it out. They got good stuff there. That's, that's, that's and, very cool. Interesting ways of looking it up. Like Chad pointed out last time, horror movies you haven't seen and should have or something like that. And uh, <laughs> break them into decades and uh, some of them by subject matter. So cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really surprised how many films that you can find only there. That's it's really interesting. Um, some of the ones that we wa have reviewed. That's the only place. It's we a can Mad Butcher, see them. which just went live today. There yeah. you go. All right. Uh, if we hope that you enjoy our review and discussion tonight, and if you do, please hit the like, subscribe, and share with a friend buttons because each click will help us find more horror fans just like you. Uh, and we would greatly appreciate it. Yes, we would. Um, of course, as Jeff was mentioning, we also have Decades of Horror, the 1980s, and we have Decades of Horror, the classic era, uh, if you like other retro reviews. And we also have uh, Gruesome Magazine, which we do the current reviews. And H&R, if you want to find out the news of the week. 
boom. Yay. All right. Spiel over. Let's get things going. <laughs> Let's take a look at the card. Mm. All right. Countess Dracula from 1971, directed by Peter Sadsdy. Uh, written by Jeremy Paul. He did a screenplay. Story by Alexandra, Alexander Paul <laughs> and Peter Sadsdy. Uh, based on an idea by Gabriel Rene. And, of course, uh, based on the book by Valentine or Valentine Penrose. Mm, the cast includes Ingrid Pitt, Nigel Green, Leslie Ann Downs, Sandor Elise, 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 yes, Maurice Denham, and Patience Collier. And, and by the way, this is Patience mm. Collier in this picture. Is that her with um, the wonderful hat there? Yes, Julie. <laughs> her uh, countess is, I don't know if she's a handmaiden or just an accomplice, but uh, I sent this picture to our wardrobe expert, Daphne. <laughs> And she went, awesome, I love it. That hit piece, <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. Anyway. Yep. Uh, production co company, of course, is Hammer and the Rank Organization. Uh, filming locations is Pinewood Studios, England. Uh, filming dates uh, start July 26, 1970. Released January 31st, 1971 in the UK. October 11th, 1972 in the US. Also known as Jeff Takeover, please. Uh, well, in German, the Countessa des Browns, <laughs> the Countess of Horrors, and I would not pretend to know Italian, but La Morte va a Bracata, Bracetta, Bracetta con le Virgini, which means death goes hand in hand with virgins. Sad but true. Yes, weird. Uh, okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. The synopsis is in 17th century Hungary, a elderly widow, Countess Elizabeth Nadasi, um, yeah, we'll go with that, maintains her misleading youthful appearance by bathing in the blood of virgins, oh. regularly supplied by her faithful servant. I would say servants in this case, but we'll go with that. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do to start off is kind of uh, share when we first saw this film. What was our first impression? And does this film hold up today? And uh, who who picked this? Was this Gregory's pick? This was it Gregory's was. pick. All right. Whoever picks, sir, is the one. Oh, I, first. oh I know. I know. <laughs> he knows the routine. When did you routine. first see this movie? What was your first impression? And does it hold up today? I first saw this on VHS in the late 1980s. And I remember being vaguely disappointed. Uh, and then I didn't think about it again until 30 odd years later when uh, the Quad Cinema here in New York City had, uh, this is over the summer of 2018, an entire Hammer Horror retrospective. Oh my gosh. This was also the summer, the last summer before the first iteration of Movie Pass died out, which meant I could go to a Hammer film every single day for about mm. three weeks. And it was glorious. I saw The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll for the first time. I finally saw Rasputin, which mm. is uh, such a marvelous uh, Hammer film. And I saw Countess Dracula. And I don't know why, we, uh, perhaps, perhaps it's the passage of time. This is a really little solid slice mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, of a Hungarian uh, horror, uh, so to speak. It's, uh, I almost said goulash, and I thought, no, pull back for the... <laughs> Pull back from the goulash joke <laughs> for the last second. Uh, this is well acted, well written, well directed. It has a couple of flaws that are very like uh, uh, slightly ridiculous. Um, but overall, this is a highly enjoyable film. It is uh, it's not particularly scary, but as we know, sometimes you know how scary a horror film is sometimes the least interesting or entertaining thing about it uh, on occasion. Uh, and as a entry in Hammer, I think it holds up really, really well. And in fact, I think it holds up really well uh, as an entry in Hammer because it's not trying. It felt like this was the moment when Hammer, when everybody started to try very hard to somehow reverse, you know, the slow decline, right? Especially with the Dracula series. And this feels mm -hmm. like it's coming from a different universe than what they were trying to do with those later uh, Christopher Lee Dracula films. Um, it's not as uh, 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 you know, completely out there and violent as a vampire circus, hmm. right? Something like that. Uh, it's just, it's just a really good film. 
it's a really enjoyable film with filled with great characters and great performances uh and two or three really nice if not scary scenes then certainly disturbing scenes uh, which of course we will get to but yeah i was very happy to to see it again and then to revisit it just uh, uh yesterday uh for this <laughs> podcast uh courtesy of shutter so uh yeah i really uh except for a couple of flaws which we'll get to uh i think this is a solid uh entry in hammer excellent excellent well done sir Bill Mulligan, you are up next. Yeah, wake up, sir. Uh, when uh, what did when did you first? I'm teasing. When did you first see this? What was your first impression? Doesn't I matter. saw this at the Orpheum Theater, which at the time was a porn theater by night, and showed uh, horror movie matinees for the kids on the weekend. Mm. It was the '70s, and it was I believe I'm almost 100 percent sure it was paired with Vampire Circus. It was the uh, second film. I would have done them in the opposite order yeah <laughs> um so what did i think well it was the second film i had ever seen that contained nudity so that left a big impression and uh nice ingrid pitt nudity so a huge impression um now maybe a pair having, of huge impressions yeah <laughs> having watched vampire circus <laughs> first this did seem um much slower paced and, and calm vampire circus is still just was a mind-boggling experience to see as a kid it was my introduction i was a big horror movie fan but universal horror and now i'm thrown into hammer and my intro to hammer is vampire circus well that leaves a mark so uh, no it just much like uh, what gregory said it it didn't strike me as being as as good as i feel it is now but i did like it um it was definitely definitely made me an ingrid ingrid pitt fan I think it holds up much better now watching it again. I really enjoyed it much. I tell you what an impression when I saw vampire circus again, maybe 20 or 30 years later, it had that one viewing had imprinted itself in my head. I knew what was coming. I was telling my wife, wait for this scene. You're going to see blood hit a bunch of ferns. And then it did. And she's like, what's wrong with you? Why would you remember that? <laughs> uh, it, it, you know, it, that's how, and, and watching this again, and it's, it's been quite a while since I've seen it. I knew exactly what was going, but I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten just how great Nigel Green is in it. Yes. Um, yeah. What a really good performance by Ingrid Pitt, although they did dub her voice. So, you know, it, it, I was but I still think happened. even take that away, just watch it silently. She has such a presence. Now I met, I got to get an autograph and say hi and uh, to, uh, to Ingrid Pitt at the famous monsters convention in New York. Peter Cushing was there. Ingrid Pitt was there. And, and both of them, both of them had that quality, that it quality. When she was talking to you, there was no one else in the room. There was no one else. And she had, she had the acting chops, as did he, to really make you feel. Or maybe this is how they genuinely felt. They seemed like just two of the nicest people. They, they made you feel like you were the, you were, the, they were there to see you, not the other way around. Just so sweet. She should have been in a thousand movies. Um, but she wasn't, so it doesn't it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to to see all the Ingrid Pitt movies out there, but worth seeking out. I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed seeing this again. Now it is later hammer, and I do find myself wondering if this were the 1960s, if this were when Hammer was was kind of really riding high, how much more they could have done with it, how you know the, the production values would have been higher. I mean, you don't really get the sense that this is a super fabulous, wealthy countess, which would have, which would have been just so perfect for what Hammer would do, where it's, you know, it's usually the aristocrats being total dicks and victimizing the, the proletariat, which pff, that's, that's the story here. It, that's totally the story. So uh, yeah, it would have been nice to see them do it with, with more money, but for later Hammer, it's a solid pick. It tells a good story. Yeah, it does, like I, I really do agree with what Gregory said. Said it very well. It doesn't have a, a lot of extras or extreme violence or extreme much of anything. Even the nudity seems appropriate, mm -hmm. not quite yeah. as in your face as yeah. as some of the others were. Uh, I think it holds up real well. Excellent, yeah. excellent, Jeff Moore, sir. Uh, what was your first impression of, or when did you first see it? Actually, when did you first see it? What was your first impression? Uh, not all that long ago. Um, probably a couple years ago um and so i did 
Mm -hmm. Bill's been wanting to pick this for a long time, so yeah. uh, Gregory, Gregory grabbed it. And I know Bill doesn't care who picked nah, it. Not at all. As long as we get to do it. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, I, I – so what's really weird to me about this is it's called Countess Dracula. And I'm kind of like, there's no Dracula, no vampires. <laughs> But then what are you going to call it? You can't call it Countess Bathory. Hardly anybody would go see it probably. No, no. Um, at least not as a Hammer film. So so I get it. It does. And, and, and how brilliant seem... that at the very, just as it throws in, how brilliant at the very final end of the movie. The last the word. Movie, the last <laughs> word is one of the peasants saying, Countess Dracula. Like it just occurred. It was just like, oh, you got it. You got it. You managed to get the title somehow in yes. this movie that had nothing to do with it. Brilliant. So yeah, she's great. I'm really disappointed when they do that. You know, we run into that all the time. Like Death Game, they they dubbed Seymour Castle and mm, other yes. movies where they dub people, and you just go, "Why? Why are you doing that? Did you just your mm -hmm. your uh, you know sound recording crapped out on you, and you couldn't get them back? I, this I think was intentional, and I still can't figure out why. Um, I actually have. I I went ahead and did this. I got the. Uh, uh, I think it's Synapse uh, Blu-ray, which is, isn't a great picture quality, but it, but it is fun. And the really best part about it is uh, there's a commentary with Peter Sazdy, uh, yeah. Alexander Paul. Um, oh, who's, who's the guy that wrote in? Uh, Jeremy Paul and Ingrid Pitt. Oh, wow. Uh, so do, there's some interesting discussion going on there. Do they ever, does, does Sazdy or anybody else ever say why they did the dubbing or did they just sort of, she didn't bring it up over. and I've, wow. I've seen interviews wow. or quotes where she said it really ticked her off, but then she thought, eh, you know, they probably just think I'd be an act actressy. <laughs> <laughs> so she was, I, I think she considering uh, her life, I think she realized there was, a lot worse things to get really upset about. Yeah, uh, it's just mysterious because there's no other instance I don't think in Ingrid Pitt's career where yeah the filmmakers yeah, she were said, so I, unhappy so I, that I, they that they dubbed her voice in. I mean, there's some actors where okay, you understand why that would happen more than once because of for whatever reasons, uh, but I, I don't think that this ever happened to Ingrid Pitt and anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. I recall well, her was, having an accent, but not not anything extreme. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and she she did her own lines in When Eagles Dare. So hey. Mm. Anyway, yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I enjoyed the heck out of it. I agree with everything uh, uh, Gregory and Bill said. I thought Nigel Green was great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sander Ellis was sort of uh, the naive <laughs> youngster, and, and, and I mm -hmm. guess he did that decently. That I cool? loved uh, Maurice Denham. As great as the uh, Master Fabio. Fabio! <laughs> uh, Fabio. <laughs> and as I already pointed out, patience. Patience Collier, and then there's a there's a bevy of other women. We talked about this. It, it astounded me that Leslie Ann Down was only yeah. 16 in this. Uh, yeah, when and they I, shot this, and yeah. we brought that up when we did Nomads. We were looking at her filmography and went, "Holy crap! How old was she in 1971?" And and it, we looked it up and went, "Oh, can that be?" You know, and <laughs> I double checked in case it was one of those uh, birth dates that showed up different in other places, but mm. everybody, everybody has mm -hmm. 1954. So anyway, I, I, I loved it. And I loved, I think it's, it's more violent than what you think because there's, there are maybe not the violence, but the, uh, the blood splatter across the ferns and across Ingrid Pitt's face. Mm -hmm. Um, also the, uh, the, the blood sponge bath mm -hmm. is, is just, that's just creepy AF. And then the bodies. Yeah. You know, yes, oh, yeah, that's, oh, no, there's some there's some great there's some great images, but the only yeah. moment of like true sort of like ooh is with the uh, the hairpin, mm -hmm. right, uh, right, the yeah. Romo girl. Yep. Yeah, she does she does do the hairpin. So anyway, yeah. um, I'm gonna I'm gonna let that go, but I will uh, I'm gonna reserve the right to bring up uh, something that Ingrid Pitt got kind of stuck on in the commentary that was interesting to me. All right, sounds good. Uh, for me, I somehow I saw this at a young age. I didn't see it in the theaters. I don't know if I saw it like, did it show on TV? Did I go to see it in the theaters? I don't remember how I saw it, but it made an impression on me because at the age I saw it, you're still afraid of old people. 
<laughs> now that I'm old, I'm like, what the hell's going on? But you know what yeah, I mean? No, when no, you're a kid. Nothing, nothing's changed. And, we should all still be afraid of old people. Right. Well, there yeah. you go. I mean, they're still yeah. making movies where they're afraid of old people. But, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so so the Countess Dracula character, the, you know, the, the old the Countess Elizabeth, for me was a frightening character, um, which made this movie work. And I, you know, it, it, and it just, you know, the other girl was in trouble and, and then that, and then she's, you know, she's stuck in the castle up and, you know, without the hair to go down the side. But anyway, you know what I mean? She's, it had all the tropes in it that for some reason just really worked for me as a kid, which this isn't a movie that should work for a kid. It's really not made for children, but, um, it always made a big impression with me and I have always held it in high regard ever since. And I've only seen it one time between now and then. Um, uh, and, and I watched it again this week, but I saw it, um, I think around the, around the early two thousands, I think on AMC, they had our T TBS or one of those, they had like camera week and stuff and they were showing everything and I saw it again and it held up and I liked it then. But it, this movie had always been to me, a gem. And not a lot of people talk about it. It kind of gets overlooked a lot uh, because it doesn't doesn't really um, you know it doesn't fit with the Dracula movies. It doesn't even fit with you know the the vampire uh, uh, the the trilogy right with the, the the twins and all that. So it it's really stands alone. It's kind of its own mm. little beast. It more has more common like with Spash Putin, I think, than hmm. than yeah. than others. Yeah. And um, and uh it's it's i so yeah so for some reason this movie really hit me at the i must saw at the right time at the right age and it just i just thought it was like a you know like a little masterpiece and it was great um and it also made me watch some of the other films but i i'm pretty sure i did not see the nudity so it must have been like a, a tv screen mm, on late at yeah. night or something or you know saturday afternoon or something i can't tell you when but i just know i saw it and i know everything that was happening uh, well of course i saw it again but um yeah so just yeah for 1971 it really is kind of it's kind of riding that fence right it's it's kind of leaning into what they're going to be going into later in the, the 70s you know because it's bringing more you know it, it brings nudity in uh maybe not as much as you would get in in the like Carnstein trilogy or other films but it, there is nudity in it and it um it's so it is trying to and it it's kind of it, it's leaving some of the gothic um behind for more of a romance feel maybe it's yeah. a gothic romance instead of gothic mm -hmm. horror because it feels watching it now today it feels more like you know a this <laughs> love torn story right this, this weird story yeah. about a woman yeah. trying to find love again and but you know so it doesn't it is a horror film and it, it you know but at the same time it, it kind of is a lot more mature than yeah. the usual hammer horror films and i find that really wonderful it, it's kind um, of a historical horror film it's yeah like, it's like here's some historical fiction but we're going to throw in you know uh uh you know bathing in the blood of virgins Mm -hmm. uh, along, yeah, exactly. along with this, because uh, it's not it's not so much gothic, uh, because it's you know the gothic is always about the past suddenly intruding on the present, whereas this is very like this is set in 17th century Hungary. It's lively. Think of the uh, the bar scene and all of the extras in the bar scene when they when uh, they go in and it's like oh. you see the entire you sort of see oh here's the whole sort of uh, uh, background of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, all of these different. <laughs> You know ethnicities and different people all hanging out right uh mm -hmm. which is the kind of detail that you you just it just gives it that feeling of like oh this is not just this isn't a, you know a roger corman you know post cycle castle this mm -hmm. feels even on a low budget like oh yeah okay we're in hungry which i think uh is great yeah and i think all that works and and i do remember like the the bodies the pile of bodies creep me out mm -hmm. um the the whole yeah. idea of the, you know, when she does the murder, the one murder she does, you know, it's like, oh, and they, and then the other, and then they're like her own daughter is trapped and in trouble. Like she's going to kill, oh my God, she's going to kill her own daughter. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and then the hero, well, you know, the story, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, but watching what, what I found real interesting before we get into uh, the taglines and stuff is that uh, the, <laughs> the, the guy Sandor, right. He plays the Emery Toth. 
character, right? The the young man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He is so much like the guy from Princess Bride, sort of. <laughs> to me, I mean, I was watching like, <laughs> did Carrie Hughes like watch this and take a lot on the mannerisms because it feels like almost like the same character to me. It was True. really strange. You're right. He has serious Carrie Elway uh, vibes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, yeah, um, he really does. He has the, the the mustache and the and the and the thin face and, or at least at that time for Carrie. Um, sorry. He um, had stardust. <laughs> over his. Well, yeah, yeah. He's or actually con he's actually convincing as the character as opposed to oh, it's just this young British guy who is trying yeah. to play a a Hungarian yeah. aristocrat. He actually feels in a lot of those scenes like no, no, uh, this is a young Hungarian, uh, you know. Soldier, mm -hmm. yeah. fascinating, yeah. And, and of course, Nigel Green is so imposing God, so throughout it. And like when he comes okay. out of the shadows after they have the you know, they wow. find the find the Fabio hanging, so great. Um, he yeah, he, he, like, steal, he steals this movie, I think, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Well, maybe Angry Pit, hold on, but we'll, <laughs> well, we'll figure that out later. <laughs> well, that's when I when I mentioned a flaw, we'll we'll, we'll get to that. That's, that's yep. one of the, the little things that make the movie not quite perfect. But it's so solid. It's so great. Mm -hmm. It's so. It's just such. I, I, I watching again last night. I was like, this is just so much fun mm -hmm. to watch, mm -hmm. right? You know. Um, yeah. Like it, it kills me. Like when they're in the the, I think it's a pub, but it's kind of pub slash brothel. Yeah. And the, the one girl comes over and sits on our hero's lap and everything, and he goes, he says something to her. I can't remember the words, but then he goes and kisses her breast. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 yeah. It's so voluptuous. But uh, anyway, so uh, what is next, Jeff? Well, of course, it is now time for first. We have to arrange the blocks. It's now time for Taglines with Chad as played by Gregory Crosby. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, Perfect. beautiful. Uh, and I'm I'm very sorry, Chad. I, I when you watch this, uh, this is an instance in which there's only two taglines. Oh, um, he would have been I so know. happy. I know. I, I, I'm sure Chad is just, you know, sitting there thinking, why is it when it's, when I'm doing taglines with Chad, there's 10,000 terrible taglines. Well, I, and then when I it's a guest over host, the... it's like two. <laughs> there's two, right? Because I pour over the foreign posters and run yeah. the translator. <laughs> right, right. All right, here you go. Here are, <clears throat> here are your taglines. Or Countess Dracula. Tagline the first. Her macabre and a bloody quest for eternal youth. Macabre and bloody. Yes. <laughs> that's right. That's, a, that's, that's pretty, that's true. I that's, mean, it's yeah, true, but it's, it's also sort of like, all right, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will say that the second tagline is actually pretty good. The more she drinks, the prettier she gets. The prettier she gets, the thirstier she gets. I don't see a problem. That means she's going to drink more and get even prettier. Win-win. <laughs> oh, wow. Just kind That's of a really good tagline, but I feel like unless there's a lot of blood on the poster, that just sounds like a very bad date. Yeah, it's you know, it's like funny. Usually it's the other way around. The more I drink, the prettier everyone gets. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go. And well, those, is, and yeah, those have fun. been your taglines with Chad. And that's been taglines with Chad, as played by Gregory Crosby. Perfect. Perfect. Good job. Thank fun. you, sir. Beautifully done. Yes, let's give him a clap. <laughs> hey, geez. thank you, sir. I'm dreaming about Chad. taglines with Chad. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Chad. Chad's uh, future may be in trouble. It's gonna say. Oh, no. All right. No, 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 no. That the Gregory you, didn't do. How would you ever? Job. How would you ever take that delicious torture away? No, we can't. No, we can't take. That Don't away. dangle that to. promise in front of poor we Chad. Have we have to. No, no. Well, maybe just dangle it a little bit. <laughs> false hope. False hope. Take away. All right. All right. Well, back to back to our show. <laughs> so, uh, let's start off. Since we did the taglines, let's take a look at some of the posters, shall we? Thank you, Jeff. Bang! Uh, this I do remember seeing this artwork, the top artwork in like the horror yeah. mag, the horror books. It's weird. Yeah, it's so strange, isn't it? This figure absolutely out screams, in a good way, 1971. 
It kind of does, yeah. right? It's kind of got the yeah. Yeah. Andy Warhol influence, yeah. but it not Andy Warhol, much. right? It's a great poster. Is this the original? Oh. Is this the, do we know? Is this the original one sheet, or do we know? Also. I don't. It's I don't know. I feel like this is the one that was in the, hanging in the theater when I went to see it. Um, because toward the end, some of Hammer's posters got pretty dire, like yeah. real no. cheap looking. And we will see one of those in a minute. But this one, at least, I mean, it kind of reminds me there was there was a similar one for Vampire Circus that was, you know, that bright colors, um, mm -hmm. and and just interesting style, almost comic book style. Great. Yeah, so I wonder if it was for like a re-release when they did it with the the double feature. I just oh, remember thinking God. this was she two headed. Does she have two heads? What am I seeing here? Now, see, I have I to complain. I have to complain. I have to complain to Jeff because see, right there, it says as, as before the tagline, "Blood." The more she drinks, the prettier she gets. I should have, oh, tagline, oh, should have included oh, blood. Got a the word. More she drinks that would well, clear. I will have to send a, uh, a correction to uh, our tagline. <laughs> Tell you what, when I make, I think a, that's the cover on this episode. Uh, I'll like Blu mention it. It could be. Could be. And then it's we right also right. have this, which I've never seen before, but look. No, I just, I just bizarrely. Okay, take a guess. Just take a guess without looking at any of the words. Uh, that be, is I was gonna say this just looks like a very very off market VHS box from about fifteen years later. Hmm. But what it's country French. is it? It's French. Uh, French. French. Ah, the French. Oh. <laughs> uh, French. Is Countess the <laughs> it, same I mean, in French as it is in English? That's wild. I guess so. All right. Maybe. Yeah. And Dracula's Dracula, right? Everyone yeah, knows. Dracula's right. always Dracula. Uh, I mean, it's it's oddly. Fascinating, but what's with the hair? I don't <laughs> what's know. What's with the hair? Doesn't really it's look not, like Ingrid Pitt. Not at all, but it looks like the She Wolf of London or something, or whatever the one that was it, the She Wolf of the SS or whatever. Honestly, this <laughs> looks like. Do you remember those uh, those high school yearbook photos where you'd have like right two <laughs> separate like uh, faces yes. of the same person? So here we have here we have Countess Dracula right there in the flesh, but also in the back, here's Countess Dracula great. up in the sky. Yeah, mm. very interesting. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, and it, it is the uh cover of the Blu-ray. Oh, there you go. Oh, excellent. Nice. So so there's one of the aforementioned garbage posters that they started cranking out at the end. It's like uh, Photoshop, uh -huh. Photoshop without Photoshop. Someone with a sharp pair of scissors just cut out a picture and slapped it on the yeah. You know, you got That's two exactly colors. exactly how it was done. <laughs> But I remember this. I've seen this one elsewhere as well. I remember seeing that. Um, but not the one below. That's interesting. Is that the Hands of the Virgin one? Yes. Uh, well, that's the. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm kind of fascinated by the one above. Uh, that's a perfectly great image of of Pitt with the knife, right up there in the yeah. little insect. In the little tombstone thing. Yeah. yeah. Why didn't <laughs> they, why isn't that just the whole poster? Yeah, why is Ziza Ziza the main picture? Yeah. And right. kiss, kissing a, an obviously a skull that she obviously has never met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It's, it's a very That's strange, it's a very strange game graphic game. design choice, isn't it? Floated over there from an Amicus movie or something. Just yeah, it, it does kind of look that way. Doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, but I I love the artwork on the bottom one though. Yeah. It, um. Yeah, that's it, the one that's. Uh, uh, what was the. Death goes hand in hand with virgins. Yeah, uh, they always like the bad boys. It almost looks like the Spain, the Spanish art you would get from the, mm -hmm. you know, like from the. Well, it does. It does have like a Spanish seventies horror. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they, it's just the artist they use. It's really, I really like it. Um. All right, so uh, let's move into the director real quick because we have more posters, and that's what we want to see. Uh, Peter Sassy also is known for a number oh, of films. Peter Sassy. Um, yeah, of course we have Taste the Blood of Dracula, Doom Watch. Got to know more about that. Drink that a new? pint of blood a day. Uh, oh, yeah. Hate the, 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 yeah. Talk about taglines. Yeah. Look at that. The Lonely Lady. That looks interesting. Oh my and god. Then, also, oh, the Lonely Lady. If you've never watched The Lonely Lady one of the worst movies ever made <laughs> it's so terrible it's it's memorable in its own way but oh God, no, is, that, no. is that pia zadora is that it who's certainly in the is uh, oh no that's the horror of it all. literally have not heard, thought about this movie in over 30 years oh i've never mm, forgotten it since i saw it wow <laughs> 
Uh, and what what is Doom Watch about? That one, why do I not have we talked about? It and I just forgot. I feel like it. Uh, the sad thing about this, of course, is that the other great Peter Sasty film uh, is not going to have a poster because it was a television film, mm. and that is, of course, is the Stone Tape which is uh if you can i'm sure it's available somewhere i think jeff you mentioned that you'd seen it at some point i, th well, I think it's on youtube I have, is it on youtube um, is it a copy on youtube this again is yeah. something i i saw i, I don't uh, know that it's a great copy but uh, i saw it in the theater here in in new york uh, uh one of the art houses here did a whole lovecraftian cosmic horror series uh last october and i saw and they played this on the big screen and it is it's it's shot on video uh and uh the special effects are what you might expect for something shot on video, but if you put that aside and just kind of go, okay, uh, it's a it's a Nig um, uh, Nigel Neal uh, script. That's great. And it's really really well directed. It's an amazing script. It's the performance is great. Uh, Jane Asher plays the heroine in it, and yeah. she is really really good. It's truly, it's one of those it's one of those horror films that's truly sort of creepy and disturbing by the time you get toward the end. But it's also at the same time this great sort of uh, portrait of of the pressure of the of the pressures of capitalism. Is one, 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 might be one way to <laughs> might be one way to describe well, and, what and, happens with Stone Tape. But it's really, really. I was surprised by how good it was and how even in a, a the, uh, you know a video uh, a made for TV uh, movie shot on video blown up to a big screen was uh, enormously effective. So it's too bad there's no. It's on the there. Amazon right now for a couple bucks. Is it? oh great. Highly, I just hear, highly recommend everyone go watch the Stone Tape. Mm -hmm. yeah, Doom I Watch. Mean, I was gonna say Doom Watch is a. Uh, they go to an island and everyone's got caught acromegaly from eating bad eels. <laughs> yeah. I'm not making this up. No, they're deformed and violent, as they say. <laughs> oh, no. The, yeah. oh no, Bill! I thought you were just. I thought you were just improvising there from gazing at the poster. <laughs> no, that was, no. Really, that was gonna be like that's beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's the actual plot. No, that's the actual plot. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Bad, bad eels. It has George Sanders in it as an admiral. Oh, uh, sounds like also a on YouTube. Model. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that looks there. that looks like that. Do watch looks like something that would be on YouTube. <laughs> no, no, I meant I'm I'm back to Stone Tape. I'm oh, okay. you're still you're still hanging on Stone Tape. <laughs> uh, but he also he also we did, did Hands of the Ripper. Oh, we did yeah. Hands of the Ripper. Yeah, we did really well done. Yeah. Uh, he did nothing but the night. I don't know if you guys have ever seen mm -hmm. that. Um, which is a, it's more of a thriller, but it's a Christopher Lee, Peter Cushion film that they're trying to figure out who does all this uh, dirty deeds. It's a bus filled with orphans uh, have an accident and then they're trying to figure out what happened. Mm, Diana uh, Doors. Yeah. And I, I feel like it's important to mention, I, I don't, and I don't know how how relevant this is, but that Sassy was a British director, but he was born in Budapest. Mm. And there's oh, this, that is important. Yeah. There is this. There is this feeling that part of the reason, part of what makes Counter Dracula so good in terms of the atmosphere, is the fact that he, he's it's something that's coming from his own background uh, and his own, you know, sort of history. Um, so uh, I don't know if that's how true that is. Uh, Sazdi's uh, Wikipedia page is very sketchy, as it is for many directors who are not as famous. As other directors, oh my god, he's directed like so many movies. Oh, I have seen this. I've okay, so he did a movie with uh, Joan Collins, and it's in the in IMDb. It's called Sharon's Baby, but I saw it as I Don't Want to Be Born, which is one of those <laughs> that's possession a much movies. better title. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those possession movies. You know yeah. that came in after The Exorcist, um, but it it's actually pretty effective. It's got Donald Pleasant in it. It's got Ralph Bates, and of course Joan Collins is our lead. Um, is that a seventies? So it's the seventies, yeah. yeah. It's uh, nineteen seventy-five. Wow. Yeah. Connecting back to what Gregory said, according to the on the uh, the commentary, SASD and Alexander Paul P A A L were Hungarians, and they intended their goal was to the story that they wrote was trying to see what it was like to be Hungarian, you know, back back in that day and that then hammer brought in jeremy paul p-a-u-l to make sure that the dialogue had a, a a british feel to it you know that it wasn't totally some other 
uh, nationality. That now the fact that it takes place there and is about this Hungarian character, um, it, it is. It was. It was interesting that they really did try to do that, and they yeah. they felt like that was the one time that uh, movies that they made was fit that bill. And that's interesting because, of course, that you know, the many of the performances, uh, especially uh, uh, the actor who plays Imre, kind of do. They kind of get that. They kind of you got to get that sense of mm -hmm. the Hungarianness of it. And then, of course, other performances like the bailiffs were like, nope, that's uh, classic stock British Hammer. Actors. You always, you always yeah, expect Michael yeah. Ripper to show up with. Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah. Would that be perfect? Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah the, like the one guy that, the kind of dumpy guy with the hair, black hair. The. By the way, by the way, do we do we uh, Jeff? Do you know the name of that actor who plays, uh, the 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 one who's like the he's the bailiff who, um, uh, uh, castigates all of the servants. You know what's wrong with you? You know that guy because when Leon. he first when he first shows up, I thought how how did. Sassy get Peter, Stanley Kubrick to be in his like. Oh movie. my gosh! Ah. <laughs> Leon that guy looks like, so much like like young Kubrick that for a minute there I was like, what is going on here with that? Oh, that was another, another, another great character actor. Yeah, Leon Lissick, so, L I S S E K. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, oh, he was in time. Of the bailiffs. He was yes. in Time Bandits. Oh my. Hmm. Uh, another quick comment before I forget it. The sets they actually. Somehow or another, Michael Carrera figured out uh, they had just finished shooting Anne of a Thousand Days. So they were allowed to use those sets. That's why wow, you have these smart, large castle scenes and mm. that, you know, and the, everything. So yeah. that really, and that really, that that's why, even though there was, you know, there's not a lot of, this clearly doesn't have a lot of money. It looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's got that mm -hmm. that one hallway they dress up about two or three different ways with yeah. all the doors. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, Wait, they do that. They did that. Um, here's why. Okay, so I'm suddenly like super fascinated by Peter Sassity. I know we talked about it before, <laughs> and Je and Bill. I know you've talked about this, but he directed uh, a sci-fi thriller western with Jack Palance, Keir Dilley, and Samantha Egger. Welcome to Blood City. Didn't you I talk about that? that? Oh, I, I thought you so. mentioned that. It must have been somebody else. But it's. Uh, hmm. I've never heard of that. Yeah, a group of people in 1977. A group of people find themselves as slaves in what looks like a west a wild west town but have no memory of how they got there hmm. and it's got wow. uh okay. jack pallet's kind of doing the uh you know the yule brenner type of role right it sounds that sounds like there's a, a whiff of uh west world rip off on that mm -hmm. lots yeah. of options and that's true but if you can't get yule brenner you'd get jack pallet's right yeah it works perfect right that's great it's got barry worse in it as well oh it does it does wow i'm, I'm suddenly like Incredibly fascinated with his work of art, work of well, this is, this uh, work is of actually film, work, film studies. Back there, yeah. uh, but I, I would say that his, his best film is Hands of the Ripper that I've seen because I've seen a number of these. I didn't realize, but mm -hmm. Hands, Hands of the Ripper is like a, it's fantastic. Although this one is close behind it, close. Taste of Blood of Dracula. Do I like that movie? I mean, mm -hmm. I do, but do I like it this much? Hmm. I'm always confusing the later uh, Draculas. Yeah. Uh, is Taste the Blood is Taste the Blood the one where uh, uh, Ralph Bates sort of like yes. brings Dracula back to life with his little uh, crew of, of, of decadent Hellfire Club? Yeah, yeah, it's right, still right. yeah, and it, it's yeah, not that's not that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, for right. late, for late Chris really. It's uh, another yeah, one of those where he he kind of stays in the church the whole time. You yeah, know? yeah, and, yeah. Like, yeah. Dracula that's doesn't right. really do much. No. no, it's more about the other character, and then right. Dracula comes in at the end. Uh, but then he, okay. you know, he gets scars of Dracula. He gets all mean, yeah. mean. And for uh, you lucky folks, Welcome to Blood City is currently streaming on Tubi. Oh, oh wow! Okay, <laughs> I know what I'm doing later tonight. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe. Later your weekend, tonight. your weekend is set. Stone tape. Welcome to Blood City. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we did. We we know we want to talk about Ingrid Pitt. Uh, so we have two sets of uh, photos. One is the aging uh, uh, Countess Bathory, or Countess Elizabeth. Excuse me. She doesn't go by Bathory. That's Elizabeth. But yeah, she's she's the middle picture is like how she starts off. But then every time she reverts back to old age, she actually gets older and older and cronier and cronier. Her warts um, get bigger. Oh my gosh, they do. They get so pronounced. 
And that and um, you don't even know. I guess the top one's toward the end, right? When they do the yeah, really cool yeah. reveal, yeah, at the wedding when yeah. she takes the thing off. <laughs> you know it's coming, and yet it still yep. it still works great. And I think it, for for old age makeup, which doesn't always work, I think this is pretty effective. It you know it's I real I actually would not recognize Ingrid Pitt in this makeup. Um, and I'm glad that they had her play both roles. You know they could have mm -hmm. gone the easy route and hired someone who was actually old. But uh, she does a good job, and it looks it looks good. It's it, it doesn't look it's, quite it, as fake. It helps. It helps that it's restrained at the beginning. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then it gets progressively again right. that whole sort of like the evil is now that you've done is going to just grow and grow and grow in the face yeah. every time it reverts. Yeah, yeah. And really and the contrast is so fantastic because she's so pretty. Yeah. Oh, the, the makeup God. is done by Tom Smith. I hmm. Not don't know anything Dexter's about him, but <laughs> Pitt was very complimentary of him. I mean, oh, I've I seen mean. a lot of I've seen a lot of bigger budget movies that try to do old age makeup, and they didn't have Dick Smith, and what they got looks pretty dire. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm, also, I'm impressed that they pulled this off. I'm yeah. gonna leave this as Tom Smith and not another mysterious Dick Smith that you guys no, no, no. It is several Tom. episodes it is tracking Tom. down. Yeah. The, 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 but the, but right. you can see as a kid when I saw these faces, that's it scared me. It scared me as a mm -hmm. kid. I mean, not to be ageist, but you know, it just was a fright yeah. when you're when you're you're a kid, you know, ten or yeah, eleven. Yeah, that's yeah. You know, ah. When you're this my age, on, I look uh, at it now, uh, and it's me in a few years. No, I know. Hair. It's like <laughs> so Tom like, Smith worked on Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and Raiders oh. of the Lost Ark. Nice. Okay, good for him. Nice. nice. All right, uh, Might have melted a few faces. Nominated for an Oscar. Wow. All right. For uh, Gandhi. Well, wow. there you go. There you so go. This must, been probably, this must have been earlier in his uh, yeah. career. Yeah, he got he got even better. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's you know the Ingrid Pitt. Uh, yes. love and adore the young yeah. younger version. Uh, that that bottom picture, I remember as a young young adult finding that in our monster books and going, ooh, mm -hmm. ooh <laughs> and yeah. was, there was something about that. Uh, you don't see anything, but at the same time, ooh. and you know what? It occurred to me that that's another sort of marker of of the year this was made if uh, as bill was sort of saying like if you'd done this like 10 years earlier uh it would have been staged completely differently you know uh, mm -hmm. uh captain doby would have torn the uh, screen down and it probably would have had the actor submerged in a bath of blood mm -hmm. so you couldn't see anything all you would see was just like them you know with the blood you know, like listen like being like that oh. But because this is nineteen, yeah. You so you would just, yeah, you just be, you just be like, and which would have been a great horrifying image. But it's nineteen seventy one. No, this is a sponge. We're going to show the sponge bath. We're going to show this, mm -hmm. the, well, the sponge blood bath, so you mm -hmm. get the full effect. Uh, it's just that's always interesting. Where, especially when you talk about nudity and nudity in movies, and how you can almost trace, you can almost tell what year a movie was made just by the way nudity is handled sometimes. Uh, you know, in this era, it's just really, really, it's just, it's just very interesting. 10 years before that would, they would have shot that scene completely differently. Yep. Okay. I'm still stuck on Tom Smith. This guy, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Chief makeup artist for return of the Jedi. I mean, Oh, Jesus. Well, uh, oh, you know. oh no. Oh, we'll see that. Does that mean he's, he's responsible for making Darth Vader look like the Pillsbury Doughboy? Because uh, that's a traumatic, I, that's a traumatic I, I know, team, but I, team memory for me is, uh, is, is, is that seeing Darth Vader and being like, what, really? So, so the uh, <laughs> the scene in here that, that really I thought was interesting was when they use Ziza, the, the prostitute, and she tries to use her blood. And she has a big because she's That's not a virgin. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> when she has she sponges all over it. When she turns around with that with that blood dabbed face that's still the old woman that was that was, yeah, was, was very yes. disturbing yes disturbing it was also it was also a great shot when she first discovers that blood can give her youth where they yeah, just, the, the, just the one cheek make yeah. the one cheek and it's like man that that works that's yeah. effective and yeah. it's really effective but this is for me uh, and i think i i even felt this way back in the late 80s when i saw this this is to me is the one of the two flaws in the movie which is it's just it's just a random accident. It's random yeah. blood splatter, no. and suddenly it works, and you're kind of like, "Wow, really? If it worked like that, wouldn't everybody wouldn't just be uh, bathing sure. in blood to be, become young again?" I feel like I feel like if this I think this is one of those like script things where you know you think to yourself, "Okay, wouldn't it make more sense if somehow 
the countess had stumbled upon the book in the library yeah. and 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 sort of oh you have to do a special ritual and then you can do this it's very very it's two things it's very strange that they just mm -hmm. like oh yeah she actually got some blood of one of her, her serving maids on her and now she's young again and that they just they're like yep we're not going to explain how that could yep, possibly, run with it. Run how with that it. can possibly happen or be or, or make sense at all this this is what happens and you're just going to run with it for the rest of the movie yep. and now, then only later do we bring in the exposition of the right the book, the book. In the book yeah. right yeah. Yep. Now, apparently, right about the time I saw this movie, I had also been given for Christmas because I was a weird kid. Um, in search of Dracula, <laughs> and oh, okay. they they had a chapter oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. about Elizabeth Bathory, and that's basically how the story goes. That she was yeah. there was a servant girl comb brushing her hair, and she pulled some hair out, and she slapped her so hard that it drew blood, and she thought that it made her hand look youthful so basically she was just cuckoo for cocoa puffs there was nothing going on and and everyone around her was too terrified to to say anything when she's bathing in blood if she thought it made her look young i guess fascinating yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a very different psychological thriller version of the story where she's walking right. around wanting to you know kill virgins and all of her all of her servants are just like Sure, sure. Oh, whatever. you look younger. You look so uh, youthful. Yeah, yeah. 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 She's yeah. like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That'd Very be an interesting story, but it would, you know, but in uh, not a fun story. Though. Not no, and also no young Ingrid Pitt. So I'm, yeah, I'm exactly. against it. Yeah, exactly. I object. <laughs> All right. Well, we. Uh, I guess we should talk about a few Ingrid Pitt films. Uh, of course, um, uh, uh, Vampire. Uh, Lovers. Oh my gosh, Lovers. Thank you. Yeah, it was probably the most widely known. Mm -hmm. uh, Wicker Man, of course, she has small a small role, small yeah. but important role. And is that a James Bond or is that like is that no? That's not James. What is that? That's where Eagles. Eagles, Eagles, Eagles there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's her and Clint Eastwood. Uh, oh, that's Clint Eastwood. What, what's wrong with me? I'm off today. Sorry. Yes. I, and then, I I love the Vampire Lovers, but I have to say that probably one of my favorite Ingrid Pitts is the House That Dripped Blood, yes. which is the bottom one. Yeah, she's yeah, amazingly. Yeah. Uh, that whole that whole sequence and that, I mean that's the best episode in that film and she's just enormously appealing in that role mm -hmm. and and how that whole little story <laughs> unfolds. I and really that that shot right that. there is just so iconic. I think yeah. uh, I think Basil Gogos did a uh, famous monsters of Filmland wow. mm -hmm. cover of of her with his beautiful colors and it's just it's just absolutely gorgeous. Well, she she makes one of the best fam female vampires ever. Mm -hmm. Um, and she only did it twice, right? Yep. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um, they kept trying to bring her back um, in in the Karnstein trilogy, but she had the good sense not to be in Lust for a Vampire. And <laughs> I would have loved to have seen her in Twins of Evil, but of course she would have overshadowed the twins. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've still mm -hmm. never seen Lust for a Vampire. Of Lust for oh. Vampire. And now after listening to, you know. Oh, you gosh. We turn them about it. <laughs> probably, probably won't get around to wow. that anytime soon but yeah. uh unless you know you have that there's always that feeling of being the completist right where you think uh -huh. sure must i've got to hear that song is it really as bad as bill said yes yes it was <laughs> that i believe love. yeah i haven't seen the worker man for a long time i need to it's good it still holds up it's, that. boy it's yeah, it, it holds up it, very it well it is it is very much so yeah Maybe top, I, maybe top I, in the seventies, the Wicker Man. Honestly, yeah, I I like it. The older I get, the more I like it. Yeah, because that's one of the films that, as a young kid, that you know doesn't quite right. gel. It, you don't quite get it, and then the more you learn yeah. about life, <laughs> the more. It, well, I kept hearing, well, oh, this is this yeah, yeah. lost classic that was almost you know lost forever, and then now it's one of the greatest. And then I saw saw it, and I had just been built up so great that I'm like, ah, ah, ah. But then it kind of stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And then when I watched it again the second time, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I kind of see this. And then by the third time, like, oh, yeah, this is a classic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's there's enough scenes in it that even, no matter what you think of the film, you're going to remember it, right? That, you know, like the the hand with the candle on, you know, and, yeah. the, and of course the end of it. But mm -hmm. yeah, but there's all this subtext in it that's throughout the film that you you know, you do have to be of a certain maturity to get, I think. And it's Edward Woodward's performance in that. It really just yeah. grounds the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. And, uh, Christopher Lee as well. Yes, but Christopher Lee is always great. <laughs> right, yeah. right. But this uh, might be this might be his best. That's a tough role, that Edward Woodward role. That's a tough role to, to sort of pull off, that sort of like uptight uh, Christian 
he's you he's know, not so a likable protagonist really no no and he's mm. and 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 it's also one of those things where you're horrified with what's happening to him but you're also sort of like ah uh, but i can sort of see <laughs> why why the this is why this is his fate you know it's uh it's and really ironically good it's his good you qualities know? that doom him yeah you yeah, know the exactly. fact that he is trying to exactly. save this girl and he's yeah. he's he you know has utter faith in his abilities and everything it just leads him closer and closer to i think that's why it works so well on subsequent viewings because it really works when you know that he's doomed when you know from the beginning he's doomed then you're just oh watching, yeah, yeah watching him go closer and closer then you, you want to reach in and grab him out but of course it's almost like a noir it's so fatal yeah 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 and you're yeah that's a good way to put it yeah excellent uh there's another female actress in this that well there's plenty more but this one of note, uh, of course, is Leslie Ann Down. She's who, great. Who you said she's only she looks so much more mature. She's than only yeah. she's only she's only sixteen uh, when this is shot. Seventeen, maybe seventeen when it's released. Uh, and this is an example of, of one of the uh, one of the pleasures of this movie. At, toward the end, when she and Imre finally meet, right, and they have that conversation, and he's trying mm -hmm. to convince her to like, you must escape, and she's like, but will you be? There's like real chemistry there. It's like yeah. both, of those, both of those those performances seem like these are you fully believe in mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. Countess Alana uh, and this you know uh, this doomed you know young man. It's uh, it's 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 those kind of it's that kind of attention to detail that makes a movie like this, especially any kind of historical movie, just work beautifully. You know. Um, so yeah, she's great, and it's it, you almost it's almost a shame that she doesn't get to have really do much <laughs> until the end of the movie. <laughs> the rest of the time, have just sort of having to fe uh, uh, fend off the uh, uh, strange advances of, just, uh, yeah. of the game. I guess that's the gamekeeper. That's the game yeah, he's a little yeah, 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 yeah. mute and kind of oh, weird, well, he's <laughs> yeah. very weird yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah, what are they asking him about? Did you see somebody take this uh, gypsy woman into the? into the yeah. forest yeah. Hey, yeah. this is so over exaggerated does it yeah. yeah anyway but you i mean it's perfectly believable that he would follow you know directions to do what he does and keep her there, yeah. You know? yeah he's just like obedient in that way uh of course by the end of the decade she would become a star right she would be uh, starring opposite harrison ford and hanover street right and yep. great train mm -hmm. robbery and all kinds of well, yeah. she was in the uh, and from Beyond the Grave, she was in that episode of The Door, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yes. And then what? She was in Dallas, right? The Stephanie mm -hmm. Rogers oh, character, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. guess that what was the other thing she was in for a long time? Uh, I don't remember Sunset I'm trying Beach? To remember Sunset Beach? She was in. Wasn't that a kind of this other? Soap opery thing that they tried to do for a few years. I'm trying to remember. So. Well, I, I swear I read something where she said somebody asked her why she did Dallas. She went, "Money, money, <laughs> money." Why would it you was do like it? some. Un, it was like 250 grand an episode yeah, or yeah. some ridiculous. Yeah. Thing. Now, why'd you do the most popular TV show on television at the time? <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't imagine why. Yeah. And then also, she had a, uh, I'd be very, very. Very happy, of course, that you have uh, uh, one of her like you know finest films right yeah. there on the screen, Nomads. Mm. And once again, as uh, as the uh, uh, longtime commenter, first time guest, uh. host, <laughs> this is a Nomads was a movie when I was a, I was a graveyard shift video store clerk in 1986. Ah. Mm. and one of them, and so when you work a gig like that. I did that for about a year when I was 19. Uh, certain VHS boxes just imprint themselves on your brain. And mm -hmm. one of them was yeah. Nomads with Pierce Brosnan, and yeah. new from Remington Steel. But I never put it on, never watched it. So when it was picked for 80s, I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll watch No Nomads. I didn't get to it. I listened to the episode. I was like, <laughs> oh, once again, probably not going to watch <laughs> Nomads after, uh, after hearing the crew. Uh, take care of it. Well, it depends on which time you have, but you know, yeah. like Chad says, <laughs> you, you have to think about how much time you have left in your life and how you want to stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you, anyway. you, you know, I, but when you think of her, you don't think of her, you know, starting off and Countess Dracula. It doesn't really no, no. come to mind. So it's fascinating when you find. 
Uh, she was, I don't know. Uh, uh, she was a model when she was like 10 years old. So, mm, yeah. I mean, was already in some stuff by the time she got to this. It's perfect casting. She's totally believable. She knew what she was doing. Mm -hmm. There's a couple shots where she looks really young, just something about the angle. But otherwise, she, yeah, in those shots, she does not. Yeah. There's okay. another another film she did in 71 uh, called In the Devil's Garden, also known as Assault. Uh, it's a Peter Rogers film. And it's kind of like a, 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 kind of crazy people in the woods after a bunch of people, and she's one of the kids. So many crazy people in so many woods. Yeah, you don't go in the woods. Don't go in the woods. Never, that, they're never go, never go to the woods, kids. <laughs> you got to feel bad for this character. I mean, her dad dies. Her mom tries to kill her. And, you know, she meets a potential boyfriend, and he dies too. It's like, boy, yeah. at the end of this yeah. movie, although I guess she inherited the castle. Yeah, that's somebody who uh, it's probably wise that you don't see the aftermath of, of mm -hmm. her character uh, she's got at the very end of the movie because uh, she's probably pretty traumatized. Yeah. And the only person who was nice to her was the, uh, you know, the maid who's going to be put to horrible, horrible yeah, death. Yeah, yeah. In real life, the people who uh, supposedly helped. Yeah, that that and again, and again, uh, the, the, the performance of this, the, the scene where she recognizes her, mm -hmm. the little recognition scene there. It's mm -hmm. also really effective and super touching and believable. Yes. It's all very. I it just this. This is a really, really great cast mm -hmm. doing uh uh with you know the very these you know some parts smaller than others. They're just doing a really fabulous job with with everything you're doing. Yeah, I, I wanted to mention something that uh, I don't remember if it was Gregory or Bill. I think it was Gregory talking about the uh, the uh, you know the downtrod the, the downtrodden. Uh, peasants and stuff mm -hmm. you know i mean they set that up in that opening oh, scene yeah with, yeah. with, the, with <laughs> the carriage you know oh <laughs> running over that one guy like, yeah yeah kip up, kip up. uh geez. please i want some bread here's your bread dumping up and up and up yeah like, uh, the good old days yeah horrible time to be alive <laughs> <laughs> well patience well, we got... collier plays oh. real, real quick i just we don't have much to right. go on about her uh but her character i really liked i mean she was obedient yeah. and supportive but then like you said when when she found out about the real yep. uh the, the younger countess um you know she she turned and it, you felt it right it, it felt authentic it felt real and she you, you could see where she would side with you know well she was all she called her, her daughter even though she wasn't right so well, i really liked her performance and that's the other one of the other strengths of the movie is that all of these people are, you know, Captain Doby, mm -hmm. you know, Nanny, uh, uh, even to some degree, um, uh, Fabio, uh, they're all loyal, not out of fear. They don't walk around like terrified. Yeah. Of how it is. Mm -hmm. They're all loyal to her and to the memory of, you know, her husband. Right. Uh, it's like real. I mean, and in, and in Doby's case, it's like love. It is. Know? The fact that Doby, the fact the great scene where, where Doby just says, uh, after you know, she's made herself young, he's like, This is insane. You're going to drive yourself insane. No good is going to come of this. What are you doing? And you're then, fine and, the way you are. And then, right? and yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, and then tell he, he, does, he tells her exactly how it's gonna play out. He knows how it's gonna play out, and then he goes, he just goes along with it anyway. He just go he just helps her anyway with whatever. Uh, a nefarious thing that needs to be done, even though he's just he's clearly he clearly knows right off the bat this is this is insane. This is gonna no good's gonna come of this. So that was a yeah. that was a fascinating dynamic um in a lot of the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean for my money that uh, that that um the handmaiden whatever uh, she's really evil when you think about it because okay Countess Dracula she's insane she's clearly just completely nuts and everything. And this woman is helping her kill these peasant girls. And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, so she's a bad person too. But then, no, when she sees this child that she genuinely loved, it's like, wow, you are capable of empathy. You are yes. capable yeah. of loving someone, but only if it directly involves you. In some ways, that really makes you worse. Yeah. Well, that's the classic thing, right? It's like, well, family is different, right? If I yeah. know you, it's different. But if you're just some peasant outside the castle who cares who cares what happens and you, you think mm -hmm. you think of like you know some of the Nazi the law, leaders yeah who were like <laughs> that who, who apparently were very very fond of their children and were good husbands and all yeah, this yeah, and yeah. somehow 
could not extrapolate that mm. out to people who weren't of their blood. It's, it's astonishing, really. The servants it, in those situations have drank the Kool Aid, and they are all in. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, but it felt it. authentic in context, right? It didn't yeah, feel it did. like no, he was it, out of place, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what. That's why I thought. I mean, it would have been much easier. It would have been much easier and much less interesting to just be like, "Oh, everyone's terrified of of mm -hmm. uh, these, you know, uh, autocratic, cruel, you know, aristocrats that we serve." Uh, but no, it's like there is a lot of of real emotion, real love, and loyalty uh, throughout mm -hmm. that, even though it's completely twisted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But she, she has an arc. She figures it out, even though, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. like you said, it might present her as maybe a little more evil than she originally was. But let's talk about Nigel uh, Green because oh, he is Nigel Green. Man, this. I love this actor. So my, for my money, the greatest Hercules ever in Jason and the Argonauts. And when you think of Jason yeah, and the yeah, Argonauts, yeah. the first thing you think, yeah. of course, is Ray Harryhausen because it's a Ray Harryhausen movie. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be number one, two and three on your list of great things about the movie. But I'd say one of the things that I love about this movie is his Hercules, because his Hercules is not the usual Hercules. He's a little bit past his prime, but he's a superhero to these people here. He is known by everyone. He's oozing charisma. Men would follow him into hell itself. And that's such a great portrayal. He feels real. He's not a demigod. He's just a really athletic, charismatic man with great leadership qualities who's seen it all done it all and you know is now kind of riding off into the sunset here and wants a few more adventures before something finally takes him out he is a fantastic hercules i wish they'd made another movie with him i'd forgotten that he was uh until i looked up his uh his filmography i'd forgotten that he played hercules and jason the argonauts and somebody was like oh that's where i know well, I remembered I his character from that but i forgot that that was hercules i just remember yeah. him being the big buff yeah. guy right but yeah um, he has done some other hammer work, yep. so we we should uh, mention a few of those, I suppose, uh, which I am desperately trying to find all of them, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, as it's hiding with all his other stuff. Um, how embarrassing. Somebody, well, I'm he was also... Face of Fu Manchu. Yes, Face of Fu Manchu. Oh, and, yeah. That's and right. The we Skull. Were... Well, it's not a hammer film, but Skull. It's Amicus. Right. Yes, yes. Um, but he's Inspector Wilson and Skull. I, I, um, I still I still feel like he really steals this movie, and it's funny because after I saw this again in 2018 and really enjoyed it, his a lot of his uh, scenes and a lot of his dialogue were the things that were most sort of memorable mm -hmm. after the experience of, and just coming back to him and just again the fact that he <laughs> he sees he sees how again it, it's it's kind of like a fatalism, but it's a different kind of yeah. fatalism, you know, uh, 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 on his on his part, and he just like. It's just he's like this is all ridiculous. <laughs> this is no good, yeah. and yet I'm going to like, do what I'm going to do yeah. because I'm so arrogant, you know, uh, and I'm so used to having this power. I'm just going to go along with it and do the best I can to like try to make things, you know. He knows he's up. going to hell. There's no point in mm -hmm. whining yeah. about it now. There's that one time when he just tells her to like, in uh, you know, not in his words, but piss off, and he runs out of the room. <laughs> and he just says, "This is not well when they." When they I'm read the will this. announce his inheritance, he just puts oh, yeah. yeah. his head down and yeah. laughs. And then yeah. he gets up and stares at so stares out the window instead. Uh, but the, when the countess hears what she gets, she gets this Ingrid Pitt gets this yeah, you know, set look on her face yeah. like yeah. Oh what right, I have to share this with my daughter. Grudge. Oh I think, oh, I think that's oh, when she that's decided her daughter had to come to some serious misfortune. Yeah, yeah. His presence but, in every scene is just uh he's just fascinating to watch. Yeah. Uh, well, he, he's like a it, snake ready yeah. to strike, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he's always ready to just take over and take control. But he then you can also see that he's that he's someone who is so sort of like fundamentally just oh fuck it. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's kind of like especially in the, especially yeah. in the, the the scene with the where uh, he falls asleep playing chess, right? And yeah. just that and just that that sense of like oh this guy is just so he he just wants to marry the countess and everything is going wrong, and he's just mm. like oh. Uh, this again, you know, he just communicates that so well. Um, uh, yeah, he's just great. I really love his, love his his performance in this. And I was very sad to see when I looked up his filmography that he uh, that he uh, killed himself just a couple of years. Oh no, like I didn't. Really yeah, this is this yeah. is he's only he only had makes two more movies. 
after kind of it's, track it's not entirely um, clear they he, right. he died he died sure, it's not of, clear it's, it's, it's overdose of pills but but people His who family with him denied said maybe it, but, he was depressed yeah yeah he yeah. apparently he was and that's yeah. a shame I, he's also one of my all-time favorite non-horror films which i have there is zulu which yeah. is just mm, the most yeah. ripping yarn of ripping yarns it's yeah. it's just <laughs> well, uh, yarns. he's great uh, the, the african uh tobruk and uh mm-hmm. khartoum mm-hmm. yeah and he like he has that look too i mean it's it's not surprising that he is that he was cast in these you know british imperial uh adventure stories he totally has mm-hmm. that vibe and that look oh, yeah 100 right and yet at the same time he still looks totally hungarian <laughs> oh that's some <laughs> impressive you know? facial hair right there yeah it's mm-hmm. really great so uh, nobody okay. cares that he was in uh, the Wrecking Crew with Dean Martin, Elky Summer, and Sharon. Oh, I did oh, see that. Yeah, Let's go throw that out there. No, sorry. Keep on. Nope. <laughs> Matt Helm strikes again. Oh my gosh! In, well, never mind. I'm not going to get on a Sharon Tate tirade right now. But go ahead. This ain't no, this ain't no horror movie. Bring out the gold diggers. <laughs> I'm from Las Vegas, so if you mention Dean Martin, I have to. Oh yeah. Very- a very uh, poor impression go. of Tom Hanks doing impression of Dean. Have a there you go. In one hand, a yeah. drink in the other. Yeah. True. Whenever I do Read a poetry, like... reading, whenever I do a poetry reading, I always like I always go up with like a glass of scotch, and it's like I'm from Vegas, so I have to read with a glass of scotch in hand. It's it's mandatory if you're from Vegas. It's called the, <laughs> Dean, Martin. Called the Dean Martin effect. So. Hey, hey yeah. Dad, a kick in the head. <laughs> <laughs> very good. There you go. Very right, nice. Wow. Yeah. The golden throat of Doc Rotten. There you go. I I. I Matt Helm movies are a guilty pleasure. Yeah, no, my dad I, loved them. We I watched those. Yeah, yeah matter I fact, I've seen most one in Dean, like thirty years. So oh, me neither. Time. But most yeah. most Dean Martin movies are like guilty pleasures. I don't know why. And Dean Martin Rose, they're guilty. I, I don't know. Nothing's Maybe. a guilty pleasure, Doc. If you enjoy it, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. There you go. And I and I agree. Those those you know. <laughs> this is a tangent, but my favorite Dean Martin performance is in a movie called Some Came Running, which is a 50s mm. melodrama with Sinatra and Shirley MacLaine, uh, mm. where he just plays this absolute dissolute gambler, gambler who just sort of like, you know, is on the fringe of these sort of, like, you know, uh, uh, well, that, that's ne'er do wells. And he's just, so, he's just so perfect. He's just, uh, he's just, it just he embodies the whole character in a way you're like, well, that's just, that's not a I, I, that's not Dean Martin playing a character. That's, that's the Martin. Yeah, that's yeah. Guy, you know, is that well, is that pre? That's pre Rat Pack. So is that is that the no no that's that's in the midst of the Rat Pack. It's, it's okay, it's like it's like 1957. It's a total okay. total classic 50s melodrama. Uh, it's re- it's really good, but I that's my favorite Dean Martin performance out of his career. Yeah. Well, my favorite, even though, even my though favorite it, Dean Martin, probably Rio Bravo is probably his best performance. But, oh, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that's like yeah, one that's of the few. Western well, my my favorite Dean Martin performance is uh, Mambo Italiano. That's, that's oh. my favorite theme. Mark. <laughs> no one can sing that like him. No, n- nobody's <laughs> going to say Cannonball Run. Nobody's, Bill, say Cannonball Run. <laughs> Cannonball Run. <laughs> These bleeds? Um, anyway, <laughs> if we had Chad here, Chad would say Cannonball Run. I'm pretty sure of it. Yes, he would. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's do one last thing. We do have to wrap it up. I think we have some uh, feedback, but. Well, we yeah, do. let's talk about Elizabeth Bathory herself, who yeah. uh, has been the subject of many uh, a wild tale, some very bizarrely far away from the source and some closer to the source. Who wants to say what about all this? I mean, if you're if you're going to do a female vampire and if it's not Carmilla, might as well be Countess Bathory. And I want to I want to point out that my, that I almost chose Daughters of Darkness there in mm, the lower. Well, that would have been a good choice. Uh, and it's 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 a brilliant film. It's a really good mm-hmm. film. Delphine Seyrig is just so She's, good. Yeah. Uh, I'm truly iconic. Uh, it's probably my favorite sort of sapphic vampire film from the 70s. Uh, I just and I just saw it on the big screen not too long ago at the Roxy Cinema here in New York, mm. and it was. It's it's again. It's like there's some like one of those things where there's some flaws that are very particular to you know the time it was made. But overall, it's just great. It's just a visual feast. And uh, again, I the only reason I didn't pick it was because it's streaming uh, mm-hmm. in various places. Is because I felt I had to go with ha- had to swing with hammer. Yeah, yeah hammer. You, you guys have hammer, mentioned hammer. Countess Dracula on numerous occasions of, of being another one that you needed. To we're running low on hammer, hammer but. Yeah, we, we might so, do Night of the Werewolf because that's a pull Nashy and, and we know how much Chad loves it. So, 
Uh, well, that that but, one's still eighty one. The one that's nineteen eighty. That version of it, anyway. But oh, really? That, that, yeah. So that's actually a a remake of uh, Werewolf versus the Vampire Woman. Oh, okay. How would you? How can you? How can you remake Vampire versus the Werewolf? I don't. I don't even. That doesn't even compute. Yeah. A perfect. A perfect film like Vampire versus the Werewolf. Woman. I don't yeah. even. Watch you, it. I just wish you. It seems like I've heard you talk about it, Bill. What's the What's the history of uh, Countess Bathory? Uh, she was she was a wealthy countess. I think she was a widow at this point. Was getting on in years. Slapped um, slapped some woman and got some blood on her hands. Was convinced that it made her young. And if the stories are accurate, she then started preying on the the peasant girls there. The numbers are ridiculously large. Until I think the problem was, as often is the case, that she went after the wrong one. Maybe killed uh, the daughter of someone who had some pull. And when they went to investigate, they found all these bodies. They um, She could not be put to death because of her standing. So she was just walled up and died a few years later. They fed her through a wall. And I guess she just crapped in that room until she died. Her her servants, if I remember the story right, they, it was like, this was great sport back then, trying to figure out how to really make a death penalty last a long time. If you were rich, you got your head cut off or anything, but these folks had their fingers torn off and then they went after them with bli you know, pliers mm. and blow torches. And, you know, they came up with a way of burning you alive with a smokeless fire. You're like, what's that all about? Well, a smokeless fire, you're not going to pass out from the smoke. You're going to die from burning by God. Yeah, they put a lot of thought into this. Very so, environmentally friendly death by oh, yeah. Uh, Smokeless yeah, fire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, in the in the commentary, uh, the guys are talking about uh, you know the two Hungarians are talking about the movie and how they're happy with the movie and, and and all that stuff. And then the sort of the moderator asks Ingrid Pitt what she thought of the movie, and she said, "Well, I I can't really talk about what I thought of the movie. I mean, I'm just the actress. It was these other guys made the movie, but then she went into a big thing about how what a shame it was that they couldn't." do a movie of the real story of her that they never would have been able to depict all that back then. And, yeah. and she kind of goes on at length about what a terrible person and tragedy and these hundreds of girls and, and uh, it, the guys almost act like she's criticizing their movie, which she wasn't at all. <laughs> you know, when they, when they, when she gets done, then it's like, well, I'm, I'm happy with my movie, you know, it's like, <laughs> but uh, she was very uh, emotionally hit by this whole thing, even you know years later. Mm. Um, that sounds like some very fragile, fragile male egos um, in, the, uh, in the room. With uh, yeah, I just think know. they they weren't yeah. getting it. They were not yeah. getting it, and I I I thought she did a really good job. Uh, She's great again. Considering I, I, her background, you know, we talked about that on Vampire Lovers. I think that uh, uh, she escaped from a concentration camp. Yes, uh, yes, when she was a young girl, and uh, so yeah, and really, I mean, I said the movie for me only has two flaws: the the weirdness of of how they set it up, <laughs> set up how the blood works, and that dubbing. It really it looks so uh, great. She's clearly doing a great job. It, it just puts this weird, and I I suspect that part of the reason when I first saw this in the late '80s, even though I didn't know she was dubbed, there was some kind of weird. You felt this weird distance between you yeah. and her performance that I couldn't put my finger on, um, and I think that kind of derailed me because, hey, this is Countess Dracula; she's the main character. You should be very sort of, and it was all the ancillary characters who seemed to be much more to the foreground, uh, not of, out of any fault of, of Ingrid Pitts, but because this weird dubbing had. I, I think mm -hmm. even dubbing, even when dubbing's done well. It, you can sort of sense that something is is strange, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Off, slightly off. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the actions don't entirely match the inflection that. Yeah, comes yeah. Time. Well, yeah, especially yeah. the uh, yeah. the scenes that bothered me were the there's a couple of scenes where she's kind of giggling or laughing and running mm -hmm. around. You know that that just yeah. felt really yeah. not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the one that sounded the fakest to me is when she's screaming and writhing on the floor when she gets old that second time. And are we doing Are we doing favorite scenes? Uh, uh, we can, but well, I'm going to do two bits of trivia real quick. Okay, just two bits. We have a lot, but we'll do two bits. Uh, the first one that I find interesting is that the original actress that they wanted in the role uh, of Countess uh, Elizabeth was Diana Rigg. Oh. 
Interesting. That would have been, but, that would have been very interesting. But she said, nope. Um, and then the uh, we talked about the choreography, um, or did we? But anyway, the choreographer is Peter Sassy's wife. Oh. Chore- did the uh, uh, gypsy dances. Yep. Gypsy gypsy dance. Dance. Oh, oh, choreographer. Okay. Choreographer, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was Myrtle thinking something Nadal. else, but yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. Diana, I love Diana Rigg, but I'm not sure she would have been quite right. I don't think so. Yeah. Not, and she no. probably that's probably why she turned it down. She looked at it and says, mm, I don't think I Although right having seen Game of Thrones. <laughs> it, might, it was yeah. a little too late. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I, I don't know if anybody knows that she was in Game of Thrones, but she, Oh no, 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 no. I think you're I think you're I think you're right, Doc, but I think in nineteen seventy one Diana Rigg might have thought I can't. No, right. she didn't want to. She wasn't going to do the yeah. new jeans. No, 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 no. Yeah. So she was the Avengers, the UK okay. Avengers. All right, feel we're needed. <laughs> All right, well, uh, well, let's do. Okay, we'll do uh, favorite team. Uh, let's do that. Gregory, start us off. Uh, I just wanted to throw out that that to me the it's actually two scenes. The most disturbing uh, scene in scenes in the whole movie are when she takes Imre's head in her hands first as Elizabeth and then as, you know, Ilona and both times says my son. Yep. Mm-hmm. Super, yeah. super, super. And the, the second time was eyes, even creepier. Right? Is super. <laughs> that call back to that is yeah, extremely yeah. creepy. And it brings up all this sort of like, Ooh, ah, uh, you know, sort of feelings uh, that are, that are not, that are fortunately not brought to the fore. They're just let, let very subtly. And you can just be like, creeped out without it being, you know, uh, put forth, uh, you know, too heavy handily. So, yeah, I really, with this time that yesterday watching again, that scene really struck me as being like, oh, that is so. Uh, yes. I think it's the, the scenes like that that make this film yeah. hold up so well. Yeah. Uh, because it's, it, there's plenty of examples of that where there's, they, they don't, pardon the pun, but they don't hammer you with it, right? They don't hammer everything. They, right, they let, right, they let yeah. it. They let it kind of just be in the script. Yeah. Um, Bill. Uh, uh, you know, I did want to say one thing. This, and I'd completely forgotten. This movie so stuck in my head and the whole story of Bathory and everything that in my book, there is a scene <laughs> that is 100% unmistakably based on this. In fact, I think I even named one of the characters Doby. That's how much I was into oh, it. And, nice. and, my, wow. and my favorite, my favorite scene would be I think the first time that he sees her yeah. now, now young and, and just how these two people are not on the same page. She's yeah. just preening and happy and everything. And he's like, Oh God, this is, I know yeah. I'm going to yeah. hell, but this is going to get me there a whole lot faster. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He, it's, it's cool that he, you know, and, and, and the, you know, it is sort of touching that he says to her, you know, I love you the way you are, which is, an amazing thing to say when the new way she is is Ingrid Pitt, yeah. young mm-hmm. Ingrid Pitt. Dang, and, you know? and and later on, he's you know he's not immune to that. But initially, yeah. he's like, "What are you doing? You know, yeah. you don't need to, you don't you don't need to do this." Right? Yep. Yeah. That's Jeff, right. Jeff, do you have a favorite scene, sir? I'm just uh, I'm going to go with the one I already talked about, which was when she's uh, does a sponge bath of the blood of the prostitute and doesn't mm. change, and she yep. turns around with it sheen of blood on her old age makeup it just yeah. looks Yikes. creepy yep uh for me i'm gonna say the when the wedding right when she mm-hmm. you know it's coming but when she comes up and takes it it's, and then the priest like backs up and falls down over the <laughs> candles yeah. and everything uh, and then it leads to the stairs which i just that whole scene just is very dramatic and very just i yeah it just it was great. It was a great ending, and then it's a great, it's a great climax. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then they they look they look so sad. Well, they should be, yeah, well, but when they're in the jail cell, all three I of them know, together, and, the, and she's like at the window, but the other two are like, oh, yeah. we're dead. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I I guess I must have just forgot. I I swear I had put together um for the the other actor, the the young guy whose name is just escaping me at the moment, but. I guess uh, I forgot. maybe I, you know what? I may not have loaded uploaded. It no, anymore. you probably did. I, you know how it loads them. And then uh, so I just want to say, I, I liked his character. I mean, this guy, he, he doesn't know what to do. And, and I think a lot of it is, I don't know that he's necessarily crazy in love with this woman, finding out that she's what she is. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. It should have cured that. But you know, he's also, 
he's a young man who is is of no great noble birth yeah. and is now you know has been gifted this this first in the will and now he's he's got the woman and everything seems to be coming up roses for him and and then when he finds out the truth it's like it just breaks him yeah yeah the look in his eyes is it, it's really really uh, it's just complete doom complete dread mm -hmm. and just like and resignation on on some level and it they have that great scene where he just says i'm just the son of a soldier and now look at yeah. every, everything that's happened to me and it's again it's a really good performance he's very it's convincing good to be true yeah 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 yeah, yeah he, he appreciates his good fortune I, you know? yeah. I believe the bottom shot is from evil of frankenstein yeah maybe oh yeah, well, the plays a very young i now i know he doesn't look like wesley from Princess Bride, <laughs> but do you not see it? It's there. It's there. Yeah. I tell you, it's there. Okay. Yeah. His bearing was very much. Yes. Very much. Yes. You know, done well. Good way to put it. As you wish. <laughs> as you wish, indeed. Have fun as the you castle. Wish. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, there you go. That's uh, please share your comments down below. We'd love to read them, as Gregory will attest to. Uh, and and write them. Uh, and uh yeah we i've had a blast doing this one so thank yeah. you for picking it yeah, yeah. um speaking of feedback jeff My do problem. we have any for tonight we, we got do? a bunch all right let's so... we we have uh four minutes oh wow so we're not we doing a bunch yeah. <laughs> Is it? four minutes we, we've we've got we've been at it this for an hour and 26 minutes yeah i know no, oh, you're gonna go over. All right, fine, fine. Let's do it. <laughs> Don't you realize right. that, there are, that there's many, many things that Jose has seen? And All right. Well, we'll just. Keep well, there and there's some non-Jose here. So, oh, okay. uh, the I first like one is from Robert Baker, and this is kind of a just a general one that I I hmm. really enjoyed. I want to thank the group crew across all the decades for the way you analyze movies. I quickly became tired of so many podcasts being done by millennials about <laughs> horror films. It seems they can only ridicule movies for being old or they get angry and offended by movies for not being PC in a time where such things didn't exist. At my age and after seeing so much good, bad, I find it uh, doesn't matter to me so much as the time capsule nature all movies eventually have. One thing about the 80s is you guys have already covered much and as a collector, I have a lot of movies I see aren't streaming anywhere. But it sure is nice to be online and see movies I bought 15 to 20 years now uh, go for sometimes extravagant prices. So I guess that's good. Please pass along my thanks to the other fine folks at Decades Before. You will continue to hear from me in the future. And I do think having feedback commenters join in is an excellent idea. So, I agree. Uh, I yeah. wholeheartedly. <laughs> uh, and I just want to say, uh, just to, not to, I know we're going long, but. I listened to during that last year, the lockdown, mm -hmm. I listened to so many horror movie podcasts and there's only one that I began to listen to every single episode. Oh, thank you. The, appreciate that. The decades well, of horror. You. And for some of the very same reasons that, uh, was that Robert uh, who did that? Robert yeah. Baker, yeah. Yeah. For some of the very same reasons you'd listen, you'd hear people talk about things and you'd be like, it'd be like watching, it'd be like watching, uh, you know, Jeopardy and thinking, Oh, you idiots. All those prizes yeah. really belong to me. You know, you know nothing. Anyway. All right. So we had uh, <laughs> episode uh, 139, Demon Witch Child, which we were a little mixed on. <laughs> no, we weren't mixed on it. Uh, but it's mm -hmm. from, uh, I forget the guy's name, the Blind Dead director. Uh, Del De Osorio. Uh, Osorio, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is from Guy Grip 9634. I thought it was very entertaining. <laughs> All caps. All caps. All caps. <laughs> Celebrating it. Yes. I love it. I love it. Uh, and then, Doc, I'm gonna, you, you're going to get this one. Uh, okay. Oh, boy. Andy L. Andy L. piped in on Dark Star, episode 187. Dark Star. Dark Star. All right. Hello, crew. Uh, since you commented that there wasn't much feedback on Dark Star, I decided to rectify this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to chuckle for a second uh, I was a little surprised by the lack of love For this movie It's definitely a guilty pleasure for me It's one of the first things I ever rented In Betamax When I got my first VCR in the early 80s uh, Between Dan O'Banning and John Carpenter I couldn't have not Been interested I could not have not been interested I had to, yeah 
excellent, excellent use of. Um, it, and that's, that's one of the reasons you made me say it because I go. All right, uh, carry on, Jack. No, because it's Dark Star. <laughs> I guess Chad picked Dark Star, but I was thinking Doc. No, that's fine. I, 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 I just, I just want to say that Dark Star holds a special place in my heart because I saw it at my very first ever science fiction convention when I was thirteen oh, wow. years old. Oh, oh wow! Wow! 1979. That, that should have left an impression, and very much so. <laughs> All right. Um, Andy L <laughs> continues. Uh, consider the very low budget. I think they did a great job. With the effects, no, it's not alien or the thing level, but I tend to think of low-budget movies like community theater. I don't expect perfection in believable effects, but that doesn't distract me from enjoying the movie. I think the characters are great. The beach ball has more personality than many other characters in films. Pinback is a great <laughs> jerk. And how can you not load the frozen captain and the philosophical bomb? The, the end in this perfect. And the end in this perfect. While it's obvious that the surfer is only a doll, it still fits the story wonderfully. And in further argument, Dalex, Dalex, hey, do look much like real robots. Either, uh, oh, do do look like real, you know, do much like robots real. either. Either, but uh, sometimes you just need to go with the story instead of nitpicking for fully amazing effects. Maybe it's because of my age growing up in the 60s and 70s, but I often recommend Dark Star to friends and uh, did upgrade to DVD. <laughs> I don't know if Jeff can find it on a Blu-ray a Blu-ray of it, but I doubt it would look much better in high definition. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that exists. But, but it still would be wonderful. Uh, also, as a quick aside, I uh, bought my brother-in-law the uh, a... This Island Earth Metaluna mutant figure as a birthday gift a few years ago. And while it's no Frankenstein monster, it's still a very cool creature. Yes. For sure. Yes, it is. Yes. And I think I you can, have I, one there. Don't Andy, you I concur 100% with everything in that comment. Oh, there you go. Ah, Metaluna. Oh, look at the next one. Look at the next one. Oh. Maybe, maybe you want to read this, sir. Gregory. Oh, this chatterbox? <laughs> oh, he's gonna read his own his own message. <laughs> yeah, we've never had that before. No, 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 that's no, no, no. I, Jeff, you should absolutely read the comment, and I will just, I will just annotate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But I, I see a contradiction here already. Episode two hundred six of Vampire Lovers from Gregory Crosby, perhaps oh. the second best sapphic vampire film of the seventies after Daughters of Darkness. So you're, there wasn't a conflict. You said that before. You're right. And yeah. likely my favorite of Hammer's Carmilla trilogy as well. Ingrid Pitt was never better than in this. It occurs to me that DOH Classic Era has yet to cover Roger Vadim's Blood and Roses, nineteen sixty. Another interesting adaptation of Carmilla. I've often thought it would make a satisfying double feature with the vampire lovers. Mm, interesting. Yeah, have any of you guys ever seen Blood and Roses? I have. In the early 60s? I haven't. A long time ago, and yeah. I remember almost nothing about it, except yeah. that there was not a scene that I was waiting and waiting for because I had a book that had this creepy scene where she's sitting and there's like this, these eyes on her lap or whatever, and I kept waiting for that scene to show up, and apparently it was just a publicity shot. Yeah, it's it's... It's interesting. Uh, I, I saw it not too long ago, and it uh, uh, it's 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 not as good as the Vampire Lovers, but it would be it again. I think it would make an interesting double feature, especially if you're just really into variations on Carmilla mm -hmm. and uh, and that story, which is you know uh, you know so so rich in terms of cinematic adaptations. You know? Well, Jeff, if I may make a suggestion, whenever you do cover Blood and Roses from 1960, you should have Gregory Crosby there you go. as your guest host. Absolutely. I'm, I, I'm looking at it. It ain't if streaming it's anywhere. It's not streaming anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to. Well, well, it will, it will, it will I eventually. I just want it to could be idea. on YouTube. It could be in Daily Motion. It could be I on do have a pick for classics like that somehow I don't think Decades of Horror has ever covered. So, okay. But it was not Blood mm -hmm. and Roses because it's not streaming. I saw it. I saw it in the theater. I saw it at Lincoln Center. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm. Ago, so. Well, we'll get. We'll probably in get bat, to that. In a bad um, <laughs> Bill, <laughs> would you like to take the last? The final. I hold in my hand the final envelope from Robert Baker. Effects. This is one of those rare ones that I hadn't seen before either. Seeing Joe Pilato as someone other than Rhodes from Day of the Dead was an odd experience for me. He is so firm in my mind as that character. 
this did feel like a Romero movie in the way it was filmed, I thought, too. This is one of those kinds I love about 70s movies. Story-wise, these movies could be all over the place, and no one doing this was was doing so with the intent of maybe we can make a series the way stuff <laughs> is going to soon be made in a few mm. short years from this. So true. I guess you could call this regional horror too. Ooh. Lately, I've been delving into that world of the seventies and sixties. In the end, I don't know if I like this movie or not. I have a feeling with rewatches, it may become more likable, I suppose. Not the worst thing I've ever seen. And this coming from a guy, Oh God. Who has just started watching old Larry Buchanan films for some ungodly reason? <laughs> no, somebody's got this. Somebody's got this. God have mercy on your soul, sir. All righty, that's it uh, for the feedback. Thank you, guys. Thanks, uh, Robert right. Baker. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Uh, oh. This uh, Gregory character. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Some, uh, that's uh, some superior feedback in this. Uh, Andy L. Superior. and Guy superior. Guy Grip. Yes, uh, I, well, I love Guy Grips. He's, he's commented before. It is they're they're always like one-liners that are sort of like, are you being serious? Are you talking about the <laughs> podcast or were you talking about the movie? I don't know. I thought it was very entertaining. All right. And we should say, uh, you know, we kind of joke about it, but doing the taglines really takes a lot of, out of Chad. Yeah. Uh, does so, it really? <laughs> it does. Uh, True. So we, uh, he's taking a little time off, and while he's gone – we are filling in, not replacing, filling in with uh, listeners that have been uh, frequent commenters. Uh, so in case you start seeing that, um, that's what's going on. We didn't really announce it or anything, but uh, mm -hmm. I guess I just did. Looking forward <laughs> to uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame with uh, Mikey Z. Ah, with Mikey Z, yeah. Mikey that's, Z. A, that's a good episode. Yeah. So keep, keep but those we did it way early. early. That won't be out for like a week and a half. Mm. Um, and this could be you. But mm. it probably, you prob probably you shouldn't. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> All, All right. right. So, do we, Jeff, do we know what's on the next episode? We do. And our, oh. our guest host will be Dirk Rogers. Dirk Rogers. Oh. Um. Uh -oh. And he has picked Trog from uh -oh. oh, finally, finally, doing finally Trog. I can finally which, share uh, my we've Trog been story. talking about this forever. Uh, wow, we thing. keep bringing it up and we never do it. <laughs> oh. so, that's uh, an extra G on that one. Though. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, I found I found a, a pretty good uh, version of it on YouTube. So, oh, I can't wait. Oh, I think I, 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 think I last saw Trog when I was six. Now, I'm like an afternoon movie. Yes, me too. It, and there's literally. what I have to say yeah. about it. Oh it's my god! It's got a caveman, Joan Crawford, and Ray Harryhausen dinosaurs. Michael Goff, Not to love, and Michael Goff. Do you, Michael do you think that's where the uh, the the caveman uh, commercial guy comes from? Trog. He kind of looks like that. No. Yeah. The Geico Caveman? Huh. Yeah. yeah. No. no, I think I think okay. the Geico Caveman okay. comes from Phil Hartman's. Caveman lawyers. Uh, yeah, caveman okay. lawyer. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. 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 But this is also we've talked about this character in uh, several classic era movies. This is produced by Herman Cohen. Mm, yeah. And penned by Aben Kandel, who we also talked about. A long list of stuff yeah. that he's he's been involved in. So that's adds a little more interest to us to me. Yeah. And uh, it also has a lot of cheese. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very cheesy film. Yes. Joan Crawford. In, in the most marvelous way. That All right. So me. join us. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, yeah, that would uh, be fun. All right. Uh, as we head out that, here. That's Dirk, a guy who has done man in a suit acting jobs, too. Mm -hmm. That's Ooh. true. True that. Uh, as we head out of here, Gregory Crosby, I just want to thank you for joining us. You, you so did much, a yeah. wonderful you. job. I can't wait job. for you to uh, rejoin this us is, in the this future. Is, this has been a thrill. I am always happy to pinch it for, for anyone. Uh, and I'm happy to, to redo episodes. I still feel that Bill got cheated by not being on the episode for my favorite Baba Gothic, Kill Baby Kill. Oh, man. Which I could spend many yeah. hours talking about. It's such a great, it, it, it's almost it's my second favorite Baba. Of all time, what's and your first thing? My favorite. Well, if this is going to be a controversial pick, I know, but Planet of the Vampires. Oh, as long as you didn't say Doctor no, Goldfoot, no. we're okay. Not at all. No, 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 no. no. I've never seen Doctor Goldfoot, but oh, don't. 
Uh, you know, I Planet of the Vampires was great. Planet's yeah. great, awesome. Maybe it's time for decades of horror, you know, remix, you know, some reboots. You know, remix. Oh wow. You know, remix, you know, episodes that somebody just really Maybe. should have been on and for whatever reason because of scheduling they couldn't be there. I get hammered you know, so much. And yet you no, know I, that I this believe is their we movie, asked you know? Bill for Kill Baby Kill, but I think you were on vacation or That's something. That's very like possible. That. I go gallivanting uh, about the globe when uh, But I totally forgot to ask him to be on the seventh voyage of Sinbad. <laughs> Boy, I Doc, know let what happened. It. Doc, let me it's have okay. it. He sends out an email okay. to all the Patreon subscribers. Where's Bill Mullen? <laughs> like, oh my god! Uh, as I fangirl all, right. all, all yeah. over every every frame anyway, of stuff. This is but I did promise to have you on for Jason and the Argonauts. Thank at, you. At some point. So, yeah. Well, you've Thank heard you. everything I'm going to say about Nigel Green, so. Nah. Well, that's one out of the many characters. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, Jeff, Bill, Greg, Gregory, Gregory. So I don't know if I can't call you Greg. Uh, oh, no, thank you. Absolutely, Gregory. Gregory, uh, then. Gregory, you know, sir. Because I would never call you Dr. Rotten. That's just sure. that's way too formal. You're Dr. You, you, you can call me something incredibly worse if you like. It's on, <laughs> you to it. Um, yeah. but he, regardless, thank you all for joining me uh, again. This is always, as always, has been a lot of fun. Yeah, great fun. Great fun. Nice an guy. hour and 40 minutes for an hour and 34 minute movie. That's us. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I, I tried. Our goal. I tried. You can, you, can blame, uh, you can blame me. That's fine. Made it stretch. Oh, no. Made oh, it no. stretch. All right. Uh, with that, let's say good night. Good night. Good night, night everybody. <laughs>